Before I begin telling the story of my life, I just wanted to say to all of you that I hope you enjoy what I've created. And I'm so happy to have met you all and that you became part of my life. So, let's get started. Let's begin with where and when I was born. I was born on December 13, 1998 in Kapoknasan, Milaor, Camarinesur, the same place where my mother was born and raised. It's where I first learned to speak, smile, laugh, and take my first steps. I also started school there, attending kindergarten and elementary. This is where I experienced studying for an entire day. Yes, you heard that right. A full day of classes in this province. I still remember waking up at 5 in the morning to get ready, have breakfast, and make sure I got to school early. Back then, I only had 5 pesos for my allowance along with rice and a small fish called Sapsa for my lunch. I had to make that 5 pesos last until 5 p.m. I would buy soup with my money so I could have something to go with my fish and sometimes I would bring an egg instead. As I grew older, I saw more clearly how beautiful the yeah, challenging land was in this place. It was beautiful because it was peaceful by 6 p.m. Everyone was already asleep but life was hard too because if you didn't work you wouldn't have anything to eat i remember once i stole the bread from a store because my mother hadn't given me any money and i was so hungry and sometimes we didn't have anything to eat except coffee mixed with rice or soy sauce and oil with rice or water and sugar with rice i learned to work hard early on as i was already helping on the farm as a child planting vegetables despite everything i went through in this province i'm proud of it because those experiences shaped me and are one of the reasons i don't want my future your children to go through the same hardships. After a few years, we moved to the province where my father was born and raised, San Isidro, Nueva Ecija. I can say that life there was better compared to my experiences in Bicol. I continued my studies and unlike in Bicol where the school was far away, here it was much closer and I only had to attend classes for half a day. One of the happiest and most memorable moments during that time was the birth of my younger sister, Maris. My father had always wanted a daughter and I, of course, as the eldest person, brother was excited to have a princess in the family. When she was born, I took care of her with great care, guiding and watching over her. After a few years, we left Nueva Ecija and moved to Manila. In 2009, we settled in Providence Village, Marikina. After a few months of living there, on September 22, 2009, my family and I, along with my father's siblings, were preparing to leave. It was raining heavily as we departed. We were headed to Narsagaray, Bulacan to celebrate my aunt's birthday. The next day, we started our journey back home only to be greeted by even heavier rain. Little did we know that Typhoon Ondoy was making landfall at that very moment. As we traveled, we saw houses being submerged in floodwaters. After hours on the road, we finally reached the higher parts of Marikina and stopped at a gas station to wait for the floods to subside. The water was so high that only my father and uncle dared to swim through it to check on my aunt and uncle who had stayed behind at the house. Thankfully, they were safe on the second floor. When the floodwaters receded, the devastation became apparent. Many animals, like dogs, had perished. Cars were piled on top of each other, and bodies were lying in the streets or caught in the trees and bamboo. It was the first time I had ever witnessed the aftermath of a flood. Growing up in the province, the only thing we had to worry about during typhoons was strong winds. We never experienced flooding. After months of cleaning up, we moved to a new house closer to my aunt. We never returned to our old house in the Providence village since we had left nothing of value there. 
A few years passed and Marikina slowly recovered from the severe damage caused by Ondoy. Life went on and I continued my education at Sudigaro Victorino Elementary School. During those two years, I had only one friend because I was a shy person, partly because I was a kid from the province and this made me an easy target for bullying. My classmates would call me names like Itim and Kuling or Dark and Charcoal because of my skin color. That one friend though was different. He taught me the things I needed to learn about life in Marikina and even now we remain close friends. After two years of elementary school, I graduated and enrolled in Tanyong High School to continue my education. Tanyong High School was where I spent four years of my life. Unfortunately, my experience there wasn't the best. I was bullied because of my skin color and I ended up falling with the wrong crowd. It was with them that I learned to smoke, drink alcohol, and even skip classes. From grade 7 to grade 8, I didn't take my studies seriously. But everything changed when I watched Vilma Santos film, Anak. In the movie, Vilma plays an OFW whose children's lives go astray. My father, like her character, has been an OFW since I was a child, so he never saw me grow up. After watching that film, I made a promise to myself that I would take my life and my studies seriously. And from that point on, I started studying hard and distanced myself from my friends who were a bad influence to me. I graduated from junior high school with high marks, which I proudly showed to my father through social media, sharing a photo of my grades. With that renewed focus, I continued my education and enrolled in senior high school at... I continued my studies at Jesus de la Peña National High School for senior high school along with my best friend from elementary. We chose the school because it was closer to our homes. And reflecting on those two years, I can say they were filled with happiness and unforgettable memories. One of the highlights was auditioning for our school's dance group with three of my friends. Sadly, only Rocky and I made the cut. Despite this, we had many opportunities to perform together at school events. As a senior student, we often took on the role of organizing these events. However, because Rocky and I were also part of the dance group, there were times when we barely had any time to help with the events. By the time we reached grade 12, organizing events became less frequent as the responsibility shifted to the new grade 11 students. As older students, Rocky and I focused more on our studies knowing that graduation was approaching. After a few months, and completing our on-the-job training. We graduated with the ceremony held at Teatro Marikina. Graduation was a bittersweet moment, joyful because of our achievements, yet sad because it meant we would soon part ways. But if there's one thing I can say about those two years, it's that we didn't just form friendships. We built a true family. This marks the beginning of my college journey. I studied at Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Marikina, choosing it because they offered an IT program and it was closer to home. However, after taking the entrance exam, I received some bad news. I failed and didn't get into the course I wanted. With my aunt's help, I obtained one of those vouchers and enrolled in the Bachelor of Arts in Communication program, also known as MASCOM. During my first year as a college student, I was happy because we immediately 
they had events at the sports center. I even joined the PLMR dance group where we performed cultural and traditional dance. Although I was eventually removed from the group, I was glad to have been part of it. However, happiness sometimes comes with sadness. My father returned from Saudi Arabia only to find that my mother had left us. Months later, as I was about to enter my third year of college, the pandemic struck. China Daily reports that a mysterious strain of viral pneumonia has affected 59 people in Wuhan, China since mid-December 2019. 400 Chinese nationals na ang nakabalik sa Wuhan, China mula Kalibo International Airport. Nakapasok na sa Pilipinas ang 2019 novel coronavirus. Today, uh, the DOH is confirming that a 38-year-old female Chinese patient under investigation in the UI is positive. Life was difficult during the pandemic. Movement restrictions turned many places into ghost towns. The transitions to online classes was challenging for me as I only had a cell phone and no laptop. I constantly worried about contracting COVID-19. The pandemic also prevented my father from returning to Saudi Arabia for work. This was a blessing as we didn't want him to leave us again. Two years later, as a four-year college student, I received more sad news. My uncle Michael passed away from pneumonia and his death deeply saddened me. After months of hard work and sleepless nights, my friends and I graduated together. All of us finishing our program and to my surprise, I graduated cum laude. Velasquez Landry C. Cum laude. Something I had aspired to achieve from my first year. Graduation was a mix of emotion. I was thrilled to achieve my goal. But it was bittersweet because my mother, who had always been with me at previous graduations, was absent. As I closed this chapter of my life, I knew it was the time to start the next one. Finding a job and embracing the real world. After finishing my studies, I immediately began searching for a job to support my father. My friend and I applied for various positions. Our first application was at the hospital where we had connections. Our classmates who were hiring for different roles. After several days of waiting, we decided not to wait any longer and applied again, this time as a call center agent. Unfortunately, we failed the call center applications three times. And in our final attempt, we didn't succeed either. During those days, I couldn't help but worry about where else we could apply. I wondered how long it would be before I found a job and started contributing to my father's support. The thought of being unemployed and unable to help, merely being a burden, kept weighing on my mind. Despite the setbacks, I knew I couldn't give up. I had to keep trying for my father and for myself. One evening, after coming home from my last job application, I watched a video that would change the course of my life. It was October 13, 2022, Thursday at 9.42 p.m. I sent an email to the HR department of WhatsApp Media. I'm saying, Hi, I'm Larik Velasquez, 23 years old from the Philippines. I saw a video from WhatsApp Tony stating that your company is still hiring and I would like to apply as a video editor. I'm dedicated and eager to work for your company and enhance my editing skills. And that was the start of a significant change in my life. On October 14, 2022, at 4.08 p.m., the HR department replied, sending me a video editing assignment. I immediately worked on the assignment using the same phone I used to shoot the video. I used the CapCut app, watched the sample videos to understand different editing styles, and managed to grasp them. I faced some challenges, especially with adding subs and sound effects, but I did my best to complete the assignment. By October 16, 2022, at 1.58 p.m., I submitted my video I was nervous, wondering if my edit made on my phone would be good enough compared to those made on laptops with professional software. Despite my doubts, I stayed hopeful and prayed for the opportunity. I told myself that if this job was meant for me, it would be granted. And then... So, hi guys. Uh, so, from this part, I'll just read the script since uh, I don't have the time to memorize it. But I will not really read it like something like this. I will still um, face the camera while I'm talking, so let's get started. On October 18, 2022, at 5.53 p.m., I received a message on WhatsApp from someone saying, Hey there, I have now arrived. Can we get on a call ASAP? 
And I replied, okay sir. And he asked, how about now? I said, yes sir. He responded, okay, let's do it. I will send you the Zoom link. After that, we had a Zoom call where we talked about my background on video editing and what I had completed so far and whether I knew how to use Final Cut Pro. And I admitted that I didn't, but he reassured me that I would learn it within a week. After our Zoom meeting, I joined a group on LARC with my batchmate, Mac and Pauline. And that's when our grueling training began. And it was incredibly tough. And I also knew that my teammates were also staying up late. And for an entire month of training, I hardly slept. I ate late and sometimes I experienced trembled from hunger due to my intense focus on editing video and I also lost weight during the training because of how I manage it. I neglected myself focusing solely on creating a good video to pack because it was a once in a lifetime opportunity that I couldn't afford to miss. After several weeks of training on November 19, 2022 at 12.41am Boss Nawaraj messaged me saying, Boss, come tomorrow. Alright, the next day, November 20 2022, I left home to go to Boston's place at Central Park West, where he and Boss Nawaraj were staying. It was the day of our first meeting with everyone. Me, Boss Tony, and Boss Nawaraj, as well as Boss Mac. Second time, I met him. Afterward, we went to a bar, relaxed, and had a good time. I was hired, but on two months probation period, after our one-month training, as time went by, I didn't realize that I was approaching my two-year anniversary with the WhatsApp family. I am incredibly happy and proud to have met you all. I am very thankful to God for giving me this wonderful opportunity. To Boss Tony, to Boss Amber, and Boss Nawara, thank you for your support and guidance and for everything you've done for me and the team. Once again, Womb Fab, Womb Bros, thank you for being part of my journey. I hope we can all stay together for a long time and create many more happy and unforgettable memories. Once again, this is Landrick and this is my life story.